Hello everybody, this is HD Shaves here. I'm back in the video. Hope this finds you well and in good spirits. So light is pouring in the bathroom window here. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day here in the Windy City, so I'm looking forward to that. Right, we have made it. This is the final video for the month of October and to back Toberfest. It has been a very educational month, I would say. Of course, I mean a lot about um, different open blade razors, mostly straight razors. And also it has been a little bit expensive um, in the sense that I've only wanted to acquire and try more and more straight razors. So let's go ahead and talk about one of the newest razors uh, in my collection here. This is a Frederick Reynolds um, 7 8 Careful when I open this here. I'll show you why. It's about a 7 8 razor. It's got the barber's notch and kind of a near wedge grind. Um, these are the original horn scales and um, this razor dates to about maybe 1860. You can sort of tell because it's got this very short tail um, and uh, you know this was an old Sheffield uh, kind of razor. And this is probably the worst condition um, razor, uh, straight razor I bought. And it, to some people it may seem like it's unusable, but I wanted to point out some things that are wrong with this razor. And so far in my experience, it hasn't really been a problem. So you can probably see on the blade here, it's got a good amount of home wear. And beyond that, the, the home wear is a little bit uneven in that there's more of it here toward the heel of the blade rather than the toe. However, um, that home wear doesn't necessarily do anything for the shave. It's just sort of how it looks. And so um, you just have to know that it's just an, an aesthetic thing. And if it were even worse than this, you know, there are some options you could do, but there was just no reason um, for a blade like this considering how much I paid. Um, the scales are the original horn. As you can see, they are a little bit warped and the blade does not close centered into the scales, but that's okay. You just have to be a little bit careful uh, when you close them. There's a little bit of a chip here on the back of the scales, but you know, beyond that, um, there's, you know, they're, they're, they're just cosmetic issues. Um, I guess is what I'm getting at. You know, but there's a little bit of, um, pitting on the, uh, blade here, but, um, what was the last thing? Ah, right. And these old, uh, wedges, they could take, um, quite a long time to hone. So my home Meister, Brad Maggard, yes, of course I'm wearing the, that was close Maggard razor shirt today. Uh, he said that this took quite a long time to hone and he did not use tape. So, um, we can talk about that whole tape thing another time. I feel like I've spent a lot of my recent life talking about whether to hone or whether not to hone with tape. But anyway, he did not use tape. It just takes a little bit longer if you don't use tape on a big uh, wedge old blade like this. But um, anyway, we'll get into more about this razor as we go along. And I've used the vegan and tallow versions of the soap puck of tobacco on the channel. I used a, uh, the shave stick off camera this week. It was great. And then I also used the cream. Um, but I've used this a couple times and I'm very impressed with this. It's maybe easier than all those other products to get to that sort of final, very wet um, phase of the lather. Um, it just doesn't take as much effort because there's more water in a cream, obviously, than like a soap. So you don't have to add as much. Um, we are continuing to use the Vald A1 Synthetic Strato Shape. And let's just go ahead and get into the face lather before I start talking about tape again. <laughs> um, we are dealing with two days growth here, as usual. For the cream, I'm going to use two almond size amounts. I know some people say you can get away with just using one of, you know, a variety of commercial products, not just uh, tobacco, but um, I like to use two. Just uh, helps me sleep better at night. <laughs> uh, yeah, very interesting color uh, to this cream. I would assume that it's probably dye that makes it that way. Um, because for example, I know they use dye in the um, soap even to make it that sort of bone white color. 
Okay, we're gonna wet the synthetic through. One big shake, and here we go. Thanks again to the person who gifted me the Tibet cream. They know who they are. Perhaps they're watching this while making a nice uh, full English breakfast on uh, Saturday morning. <laughs> um, and also, thanks of course to the person who's loaning me this brush. Uh, looks like I'm going to uh, send it back to its rightful owner in the next... Uh, in the next week or so. I'm waiting until it feels a little bit more uniformly pasty. Alright, about there. And then now I'll add some water. I think I mentioned this earlier in the week um, when I use this product, but creams, creams are odd to me in that a couple times a year I'll have an excellent shave with a cream and I'll wonder if I should start using them more often. But soaps do on the very, how do you say it? On the majority, yeah, soaps on the majority perform just so much better, right, um, than a cream. So I've never totally made the switch to where, you know, I, I wouldn't say I use cream products more than maybe 10 times a year. Um, and so it, the, the thought always does sort of enter my mind just because it is so, they're, they're so easy to work with. Um, but this is probably the best cream I've ever used. So if you want to try one, um, I can definitely recommend this tobacco cream here. So we're getting pretty close where we'd like it to be. And that's really all it takes. Um, yeah, I think let's uh, make sure that this is wet enough. I think it is. The only thing you have to worry about with these creams is that once you do get it to this point, um, you don't want to keep keep adding because then it will be more likely to sort of get washed out um, compared to if you're using a soap that can kind of tolerate a little more water. So we're gonna be careful with our lines here. Um, I got this. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It's it's hit a little bit now, but there's this. I got this scar, this cut that's going across here. Not not this. That's something else, but. It's like I have a horizontal line here and I have no idea what it came from. Uh, I definitely wasn't shaving because I don't shave up here. Um, I think maybe it was when I was walking, you know, here in Chicago we have all these streets where tree branches are just right onto the street and I'm pretty tall. And so sometimes I don't duck quite enough uh, before going under um, some of those trees. So I, I wonder if that's what it was. Um, okay, so let's start with the first pass. So usually I cut out here. Um, and then say, I'll bring you right back when I'm done lathering, but uh, it didn't really take too long today. So, um, like I mentioned about this razor, it does have um, a very short tail. And so I'm gonna try putting my pinky on the bottom here. Um, I did the three in the front, one in the back thing, and that didn't feel comfy at all. Um, so I think on the bottom is the place where it's gonna belong. Um, like I said, we're dealing with two days growth. But also a pretty quiet razor. Given it's near wedge nature.
Hope everybody's doing well. Weather's been a little up and down here, but I think we're about to go into a nice streak of kind of consistently nice fall weather, so that'll be good. So one of the reasons to try um, an old razor like this, I mean even older than the ones that I've used already, well it's definitely a good era in general kind of for those Sheffield uh, razor makers. And I've been told also that this is a softer kind of steel, the way it's uh, put together with the various compounds. Um, you know, they say like certain uh, certain razors have very hard steel. This is considered to be on the softer side. Um, Brad mentioned that it would be very receptive to stropping. Whereas other razors, not as much. And I could maybe say that I can get the sense that this is a different feeling um, to a near wedge than that later uh, weight and butcher. Um, it, it does feel like the edge is maybe a little bit more, I don't know, focused maybe? I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the right word. But um, I also had a Red Imp 132 um, arrive. Also honed by Brad. And that one is a wedge too, but it's from the mid 1900s. And German uh, made. So that'll be nice to try. Okay, first pass complete, very quiet. Um, we'll rinse it and just do one more pass, stay tuned. Pass number two with Tabak. Okay, let's do second pass against and across the grain. I know I mentioned that I might um, do one of these shaves this month uh, drinking a German beer, but uh, it's just not in the cards for today. As it's about uh, nine, nine o'clock in the morning at the moment and um, I have to go to a work meeting after this. Not, and not on Zoom either in person, so that uh, probably wouldn't look too good. Um, but moreover, allow this to be a nice segue into <laughs> I don't understand um, the people who drink stuff while they shave. Um, the only exception, maybe, is if you work like a very early morning shift and you just want to make your whole like morning routine as efficient as possible <laughs> and you can't possibly wait to have the coffee like before or after your shave. Um, otherwise, I don't 
I don't, I don't really get it. Um, especially if I'm doing you know, like a straight razor shave, like today, I, I don't want to be dealing with a glass of something on the side. It's like to say with these wedge razors, they take no prisoners. As in, And they will mow down your whiskers and ask questions later. Um, I got into a little bit of the science behind all that um, with a friend this week, and perhaps it's common knowledge, but you know the if you compare this near wedge with say a full hollow, um, because there's more steel in the middle of this grind, the edge will not flex as much. And so, whether that has to do with perceived efficiency, I can't say for sure, but it definitely does have something to do with if you're newer to shaving this way and you're not as solid with your technique, a hollow razor might feel more, you know, flexing and not consistent compared to a wedge like this. And that's something I notice. Um, also, it, just ha it also has to do with the sound, because you're not hearing as much with these. But, that being said, you can use whatever kind of razor that works for you, and that's what it's all about, right? I feel like as, you know, I've only done, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. I, I made it to 100 open blade shaves this year, uh, sometime this month. Um, not all with straight razors, some with the WEC, some with, you know, Artist Club open blades. Um, but anyway, I did make it to 100. But I feel like in my experience that the less, the lower amount of audio feedback that you get out of these wedges actually helps me to not adjust my technique as much. If it's a really loud, hollow razor, that might cause me to be a little bit more flexing. Okay, great. Uh, two passes done. I'll rinse and come back and talk to you over poche for the last time this month. Woohoo! Okay, we're back and let's do the two-time aftershave today. We'll do Tabac Eau de Cologne. Uh, some people are shocked that I just splashed this right on my face. I'm supposed to, you know, lightly apply it to my neck or wrists or something, just for the fragrance aspect. But I don't mind. Um, I definitely wouldn't. I mean, I guess I probably have, but usually I will only use this as the aftershave because there's nothing in it besides alcohol and fragrance. So um, on most occasions, I will double it up with some unscented balm. So that's exactly what we will do now. I am looking forward to spreading the love of tobacco with my coworkers <laughs> in about uh, 45 minutes. So that'll be great. Okay, great. That feels nicely absorbed. Right, let's do a quick rundown. We used tobacco shaving cream. Not the soap, not the stick. The cream. They make all kinds of stuff. They make deodorant, they make bar soap, they make foam 
like to shave with that you don't have to use a brush with. Um, they have other scents uh, made by Moiter uh, and Wurz under the tobacco line, but they're called something else. That's why this says Tobacco Original, because uh, now there's more than just original. Okay, we used the Vald Synthetic. Um, very dense brush, and I definitely gotten um, accustomed to it. So when I went to use a non walled synthetic, I could notice a difference. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that this is better, but the density difference was noticeable. And the Frederick Reynolds 7 8 near wedge, barber's notch, horn scales, small tail from about 1860. Did that cover everything? I hope so. Um, this was a really cool um, find and just a good reminder out there to everybody that you can find these razors for affordable prices um, on eBay or your, you know, your local flea market or whatever. Um, the challenge to me more than becomes, you know, who are you going to send it to, to uh, restore, hone, or maybe you can do some of the restoration yourself. I'm not one of those people, um, so I'm happy to pass it along to Brad, for instance. Um, okay, great. So thank you all so much. If you made it this far, let me know what you thought of Tobacktoberfest. And um, again, if this wasn't enough reason for you to go out and try tobacco, if you haven't already, then I'm not sure what would do it. So yeah, uh, thank you all. This has been HG Shaves. Take care. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye.